So here we'll look at the mechanism of water reabsorption on the collecting duct, specific to the uh, process of osmoregulation. Now this uh, whole bit here, that is the lumen of the collecting duct. And the wall is made up of individual cells. And in each of these cells, uh, there will be a few of these vesicles containing an aquaporin. As I mentioned before, the process of osmoregulation is controlled by ADH released from the pituitary gland and it travels around the bloodstream and it gets to the collecting duct in the kidney and, and in the nephron. ADH being in a hormone is too big, so it means that, that means that it can't pass through the plasma membrane to get into the cells. So what it does is that it binds to a receptor on the uh, surface of the, of the plasma membrane. And once the cell with that particular receptor receives ADH, it will then uh, convert ATP to CAMP, which is cyclic AMP. And I think you would have uh, learned this in other chapters as well. Cyclic AMP acts as a secondary messenger in the cell because quite a lot of times when hormones, it can either be ADH or growth hormones or even insulin, they can't pass through. So they rely on the conversion of ATP to make cyclic AMP and so that there is a messenger inside the cell to tell uh, the cell to do things. Because it is the secondary messenger, so it will basically tell the uh, vesicle containing the equiporins to move to another area, like that. And so therefore, what happens is, as, it, as the vesicle moves towards the plasma membrane here, it can fuse with the plasma membrane of the uh, inner wall of the, tube, of the collecting duct. So like this. So as it fuses uh, with the plasma membrane, the aquaporin then actually goes like that so in that case and this is the fusion bit uh, and therefore finally it will get to this stage where it is completely deposited and inserted on the inner wall of the collecting duct and because now there is an aquaporin inside the water in the filtrate can easily move across into the tissue fluid and then into the blood by osmosis so when the body is dehydrated, the first step is that ADH will be released from the pituitary gland and it travels to the kidney to bind to the receptor on the tubule wall. And then because of the ADH, uh, it will trigger CAMP formation in the cells from ATP. And the cyclic AMP signals the physicals to uh, move and fuse with the plasma membrane and therefore it inserts more aquaporins on the inner wall, increasing the permeability of, uh, to water, therefore more water reabsorption can actually occur. It's worth noting that uh, regardless of the situation in the body, ADH is still released to do all of these process. It's just that when you're dehydrated, more ADH is being released, and then hence more of more aquaporins are deposited, more water reabsorption. When the body is hydrated, less ADH will be released, uh, and has less aquaporins deposited, less water reabsorption. So just keep in mind when you answer questions in exam, it's important to say, is it more or is it less?